Alright guys, welcome to your 68th C++ tutorial and these next couple tutorials are going to be a chain of tutorials. I can't teach you guys what I'm going to teach you in one tutorial, so it's probably going to be like a three or four part series. But anyways, what I'm going to be teaching you guys is this. I'm going to be building a really cool program showing you how to work with files and by the end of these tutorials, you guys are going to be a pro on how to work with files. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pretending we're making a computer game. Now in this computer game we have a character and this character in his own little world is going to come across a bunch of different objects. Some objects have no effect on him whatsoever. Zero effect on his health or his you know happiness whatever you want to call it. Some objects like ninjas, meth, and dirty needles they harm our character. So they're going to you know have negative 54 energy or what you say it's like energy or something now some objects like a fruit a soda and candy help our character out so they're gonna give them positive energy so as you can see we have a file with a name and the effect that it has on our character's energy so we're gonna be building a program just to print out these different types of items and groups. For example, we're going to have the user press 1 if they want to print out all the plain items like a shoe, a pencil, and a chair. Press 2 if they want to print out the helpful items like fruit and soda and candy. And press 3 if they want to print out the harmful items like a ninja, meth, and a dirty needle. Now we'll have them press 4 if they just want to quit the program altogether and you know go watch YouTube videos. So that's the basics of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be incorporating a program with a file and it's going to work beautifully together. But like I said, it's going to take more than one video so just be prepared for that. So let's go ahead and start coding this baby right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to give them a menu to choose from. Now this menu is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, depending on what they press, we're going to output the appropriate items. So we're going to want to store this variable, either 1, 2, 3, or 4, in a variable. So we'll just go ahead and make, we'll store this number in a variable named what they want. Now this will be equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. So now what we can do is we can just take that variable what they want and we're going to set it equal to a function in order you know to get the number from them. So we'll just name this function get what they want. Now we didn't build this function yet and this obviously isn't a built-in function on C++ so we need to go ahead and build it right now. So what I like to do actually is whenever I'm building a big program that's going to be working with a lot of functions. Above each function, well I'll just do it with main first, I like to leave a comment just the function name, like a main function. And you guys may be like, alright, why the heck do you want to do that? Well if you notice, the comments are a different color and it makes it really easy to find functions whenever you're scrolling through like 300 3,000 lines of code. So you guys might be like, all right, that's kind of dumb, but trust me, do it. It's going to save you a whole bunch of headaches in the future. So we're going to be building this get what they want function. So the first thing I'm going to do is get what they want function. And I probably spelled it wrong. Yep. But you know, good enough. So now remember this function has to return an integer that's going to be either 1, 2, 3, or 4. So our return type is going to be integer. Now the name is get what they want, so just go ahead and copy that and paste that. And it's not going to take any parameters. We don't have to give any information into it. We just want to get information back from it. So that's why it's not going to take any parameters. So now what we want to do is we need a variable to temporarily store 1, 2, 3, or 4. So we got to make an int variable and we'll just name this choice. Name it whatever. You can name it x if you want. It really doesn't matter. So now what we want to do is we want to output the their choices for them so you know they know whether to enter 1, 2, or 3, or 4. So just go ahead and make four different C out statements. We can make it all in one statement but it would probably look cleaner if it's just four different statements. So in the first one we'll just put enter 1 for just plain items and you probably want to put each of these on a new line. So just copy this three more times, copy, and we'll go ahead and write enter two for two can be, let's say, helpful items, and this will be the, you know, candy, the soda. Is that really helpful for a kid? I don't think so, but in this game it is. And three will be for the harmful items. 
and this will be like the uh, the ninja, the dirty needles, and the what else did I put? Oh yeah, meth. Definitely harmful for a kid. And four will just be like quit program. So whenever they press four, the program is going to quit. So now what we want to do is we want to allow them to input, of course, one of those numbers. So CIN, that's how they get information from the keyboard. And whatever number they enter, it's going to be stored in the variable choice. Now all we need to do is take that variable choice and return it in our function. So whenever we return choice, it's going to store that number in what they want. So now this good what they want function basically gets a number from them from the keyboard and it stores it in a variable what they want. So now we have a variable either one, two, three, or four. But we didn't do anything with that variable yet. And what we want to do is since this program is going to keep running until they hit four, we want to throw pretty much our entire program inside a while loop. And this while loop is basically going to say, okay, keep running this program until they hit the number four. So we're going to say, all right, while that what they want variable is not equal to the number four, keep running this program. And of course, at the end of this, at the end of this while loop, well, let me think. Actually, no, okay. I'll save that for later on. But basically, what I'm going to be doing is this. I guess I can throw it in right now. At the end of this while loop, we want to give them another opportunity to, you know, get what they want, to enter another number. So go ahead and copy this. And, well, I guess I can show you guys what's going on right now. Basically, this program is going to run. And I didn't prototype it. Always remember to prototype your functions, ladies and gentlemen. And whenever you prototype something, just copy the header and paste it at the very top. And that way, whenever your program comes across it like it did right there, um, it's going to know what it is. So let me show you guys what's going on so far. Well, the very first thing that we did is we ran this program, and it called up this function right here. Now, once it got that function, it pretty much took a number from them, 1, 2, 3, or 4, and stored it in the variable what they want. And we said, all right keep calling this function and making it equal to store to what they want until they enter four. So whenever they run this program, they're going to be able to enter one, it's going to do something. Two, it's going to do something. Three, it's going to do something. They can enter three a hundred times if they want. But as soon as they enter four, the while loop is going to end and the program is going to quit. Just like that. So we have the basic shell of the program right now. We basically are getting a number from them and we're going to keep getting a number from them until they enter four. So now, with the basic shell done, the only thing that we need to do now is whenever they enter one, handle that one appropriately and show all the plain objects. Whenever they enter two, handle that appropriately and show all the helpful items. Whenever they enter, enter three, show all the items that are harmful to the character. And now that we you know have the basic shell we can move on to that but we can't in this tutorial because if I do I'm gonna run out of time so copy all this code down make sure you know how this menu function works and also make sure you understand why how we keep looping through um, this function until they enter the number four and by the way as soon as they enter number four this while loop is gonna be false and it quits and as you can see whenever it quits there's no more co there is no more code after it so the main function ends and our program stops so once you guys understand that you're ready to move on to the next tutorial so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video